I've got a Note 7 size hole in my heart that I'm hoping one of the latest from Google Pixel phones can fill. Meet the Pixel and the Pixel XL. Big and little brother offering almost the same specs aside from screen resolution and battery life. On paper, there's a lot to like about the phones. The first phone with Android 7.1, first phone to launch with Google's brand new Assistant. They bring a lot of unique things to the fold. It feels more like a complete version of Android, but all is not wonderful in the Pixel world. I'm John Renders from Techno Buffalo. I'm gonna try to answer the question, should I, and more importantly, should you buy a Pixel phone? The Pixel is an extremely polarizing phone. When we did our hands-on from the Google event and they announced it, we could see, and the big issue that people had was the look of it. This is not a beautiful phone by any stretch of the imagination. This is not gonna win design awards. It is an odd looking device with some weird design choices. In fact, it looks to me like a mid to low range phone. And that really stems from that. It's got a gigantic chin on the bottom of it. And I can at least wrap my head around chins when there's a fingerprint sensor or a home button there. But this has on-screen buttons. It's uh, really hard to understand why that's there. And design language continues on to the back. where We've got your aluminum, and then you've got a glass part on the top, which looks almost like a sticker, because it doesn't all go all the way around the side of the device. It seems to stop. I can forgive the back, though, because signal strength on this is absolutely unbelievable. I tested it with Verizon Wireless, and at my home, when I had Verizon, I had to get an external cell tower just to get any sort of service. But with the Pixel XL, it's able to get three bars of LTE. So it looks ugly, super functional. For most, I think Google Assistant is going to be the reason a lot of folks want to pick up a Pixel or a Pixel XL. She's here. You can activate it with the old OK Google that you could on any other phone or simple holding down of the home button. The reader got a new animation, and she's going to ask you how she can help. And she's going to speak very naturally, and you can have contextual conversations. You could ask about an actor and then say what movie was he in without having to say the name. She can tell you jokes, she can sing songs, she can tell you about the weather, you can ask her to show you pictures of your dog, and she can do all of that. For me right now, it seems marginally better than the already awesome Google Now, but with AI learning, it's only gonna get better the more people use it. As Google Assistant stands right now, it's not the biggest compelling reason to buy a new phone. In fact, you can access most of the features if you download Google's Allo application, or wait until hopefully it's someday Google Assistant comes to other Android devices, at least natively. Google is also touting 24-7 service right from the phone itself, and you can access it through the settings. And I wanted to test it before I filmed, but I was greeted with a 45-minute wait. Now, I'm filming this review before the phone's actually released, so hopefully by the time the phone comes out, that wait time will go way down, similar to Amazon's Mayday type service. So Google sent us the 32 gigabyte versions of the Pixel and the Pixel XL. I was a little worried about storage, but Google is touting unlimited cloud storage for your photos. So just so you know, when you go ahead and turn on the phone from a clean boot, you're gonna have 7.23 gigabytes taken up, which means you're gonna have a little over 29 gigabytes free of space. And after I installed all my applications and all my photos sync over, I still had over 11 gigs of free space. So I was surprised I could actually make a 32 gig phone work for me. With that cloud storage, any older pictures you have on your phone or things that weren't taken over the past 30, 60, or 90 days, depending on how you set your phone up, are not gonna be on your device when you don't have Wi-Fi or cellular. So at least bear that in mind. One of the things that stood out for me with the Pixel XL was the QHD screen looks absolutely incredible. In fact, I would say it even rivals the best screen in the market, which belongs to Samsung. The screen looks really nice. The blacks look really dark. The colors are bright and vibrant and even works well in direct sunlight. On the Pixel front, it drops resolution down to 1080, but it still looks equally good. You're not going to see any sort of pixels, and both, of course, will work with Google's VR Daydream. The other difference is battery. The Pixel's got a smaller 2770 milliamp hour, whereas the Pixel XL jumps it to 3450. When I first set up new devices, I almost always set Android devices up from scratch. When I'm downloading all of my applications, phones tend to get incredibly warm. The Pixel XL didn't get very warm at all when I set up, and that was a very odd thing to feel. The regular Pixel did get warm uh, up by the top, but straight into the Pixel XL, it seems to have really good heat distribution, so it's probably not gonna smoke and maybe explode. Google spent a good portion of their keynotes talking about the cameras on the Pixel phones. They're the same sensor, it's a 12.3 megapixel sensor, both with OIS and f2.0 apertures, and the pictures look really nice coming out of it, especially when you have normal light. However, when you get to low light, despite the f2.0 aperture, I did notice some artifacting and the images just looked kind of mushy. But the OIS does work great, and overall the camera seems to be very impressive. Uh, I would say it's still below what Samsung offered on the now defunct Note 7, 
and the Galaxy S7, but it's really one of the better cameras that I've tested. I think it's on par with what we have in the iPhone 7. The new camera UI is really nice too. It has lens blur built in. It's a little bit slow to process. I noticed that it didn't do a very good job blurring the entire background. It looked more like an Instagram filter than it did something that was built into the camera itself. If you want to see more camera samples or read more about the camera as a whole, hit the link down below and check out the written review that Todd Hazelton did. We'll go way more in depth on the camera. Some other cool things found in Android 7.1 are app shortcuts. It works similar to 3D Touch on iOS devices. I found them to be really handy. And the best thing about them, you don't have to determine how hard you're pressing the screen. If you go ahead and hold settings, for example, you can see the shortcuts pop up, but you can also move the icon right from there. You don't have to wait for it to start dancing. It's a really nice, subtle thing that Google's built into 7.1 that I really like. There's a lot of things to like about Android 7.1. I like the way folders look on here. I actually got used to the new app drawer. I liked having the extra icon in the dock. I like the extra space that Google gave me by having just a little icon for search. Now weather is built in. But the biggest question that I got on Twitter asking about Android 7.1 is that the Google Now panel is still there when you swipe to the right. It is. There's a lot to like about the Pixel and Pixel XL, obviously, but there's an equal amount to not like about it, starting with the price. At $649 or $769 for the Pixel or the Pixel XL with only 32 gigabytes of storage, they are very expensive. And with that really premium price, you're missing out on at least one of what I consider the four premium features of most phones. Waterproofing and water resistance, really to speak of. You're not getting expendable storage, there's no removable battery, and there's no wireless charging built in. Almost every other premium smartphone out there, you could pick one of those four that's gonna have it. Even the iPhone now has IP67 built in. And for me, that's almost inexcusable for a phone of this price point. The big question I asked at the beginning, Am I gonna buy this phone or should you buy this phone? I think you should only buy this phone if you're an Android purist at heart and you're the ones that bought every Nexus device and you want the latest updates from Google. Then yes, buy this, but know what you're getting into. If that is not you and you want a flagship phone, you're willing to play a flagship price, I think you can do better than the Pixel and the Pixel XL. It's kinda of disappointed with it overall. So the Pixel phone, polarizing from the beginning and polarizing to the end. What side of the fence are you guys on? Are you gonna pick one up? If you do, you're not gonna be disappointed. I think you can probably do better for your smartphone buying dollar. Let us know in the comments down below. Give the video a thumbs up, we always appreciate it. Till next time, I'm John Ranger from Techno Buffalo.